So if you want to hear any lore, and I mean any lore whatsoever, make sure you're in the Discord because I usually ask a question and the first person to get the question right gets to pick lore for the week. Did not ask a question, so this week's lore was picked by me and I felt like going back to New Vegas and I picked the White Glove Society. Now they're one of three of the families or the new tribes of Vegas. And I call them the new tribes of Vegas because of how much tribalism is still being portrayed throughout New Vegas. If you play two and you open with tribes and you see how they experience the wastes and, and how like the settlement of Arroyo is starting to become what it is and by the end of the game flourishes if you get the right ending, all the three families are the Gamora's the tops chairman and the ultra luxes um white glove society all it is is tribes and suits it's it's politics it's gang banging and suits so i refer to them i the game does allude to it a little bit but personally i refer to them as the new tribes of vegas the white glove society who we're going to be speaking about uh they operate the ultra lux are and are employed by Mr. House. Now, not much is known about the White Gloves beforehand. When they signed their contract to become one of the houses, to work on the strip, to work for House, they signed in there that if they abandoned their ways of the past, their cannibalistic ways, what they would do, what House would do, is he would make sure that uh, no one would know of what their original name was because they were cannibals. You don't really want to go to a casino that's run by cannibals. So he said, look, do this, sign this paper, and I'll make sure that nobody ever knows or remembers that you guys were cannibals. They're essentially, they essentially have a dead name. They are really secretive of their past, obviously, for their cannibalistic ways. And because of that, if you go into a casino and ask them something, they kind of shirk away from it. They don't really want to answer it. They'll find a way to get out of it, out of the question, that is. I don't know about you, but when I think of Las Vegas, I think of opulence. I think of kind of regal regality a little bit. I think of um, Howard Hughes and Bugsy Siegel, people with money and people with power, and just the mob and Sinatra, the Rat Pack. So, of course, there's going to be a hotel that is nothing. It's, it's hedonism. Like, in its purest form, almost. It's just luxury. It's just the finest of the fine. So, they have... They pride themselves on offering the most elite of elite experiences. It takes a credit check to get into Vegas, but you have to have well over that to get into the Ultra Lux. They... They have a, an incredibly strict dress code. The, the members, the White Glove Society members themselves, dress in such a manner that it's tuxedos, white shirts, canes, masks, uh, things that kind of obscure who they are. But at the same time, they look prim and proper. They look better than others. They look tip-top. Like, for lack of a better word, I know the tops is across the street, but they look tip-top. They're also incredibly well-spoken. Everything has a diction to it. Everything, every, they wouldn't stutter. They wouldn't do that. I was trying to do a bit and I can't. Everything that they say has a meaning to it. They think about what they say before they're going to say it. They don't stutter. And they're well-behaved. And by well-behaved, it means pretty much, uh, shut up. <laughs> shut up, be quiet, be calm, be cool, play your play your games, eat your foods, drink your wines. Now, the head of the White Glove Society at this point in time, this point in time being 2281, when New Vegas takes place, is Marjorie. Uh, she's head of the White Glove Society, and she's the manager of the Ultra Luxus Steakhouse, the Gourmad. Now, back in the day, I don't even know if it's a lore video. We did it such a long time ago, and there were still two hosts on this show that it was, we did a quest breakdown of Beyond the Beef, the quest that goes about this, about how they're trying to rebuke their ways of being cannibals and how they can't and it's in their DNA and they have to consume human flesh. And you get to meet Heck, Heck Gunderson and his son and you get to go in and, and into the Ultralux and sneak around. It's one of the better quests in the game. Um, but the Gourmad is where you would find Heck Gunderson, the sauna you have to go to. 
And then there's Mortimer. He's the hotel's manager. And he works the front desk. Now, because of him working the front desk, this gives him such an opportunity to see who is coming in and out of the building. And because of that, uh, he knows who's going to be the best. That guy's a little too plump. She's a little too thin. He's a little too short. He's a little too this. And I get all of my lore off of fallout.fandom.com. So if you go there, you can ask him why they wear masks. And Chauncey will tell you that it's just to keep up with the allure of mystery and whatnot. But when I was thinking about this, when I read this earlier, it's probably because some of those tribesmen, because Vegas is only a handful of years old, New Vegas is, though some of those tribesmen might have been well known and they were like, oh, that's the cannibal guy. So they might have done it to obscure their, 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 their faces, their, themselves. But if you ask, someone will say, you mustn't ask why we wear our masks. We are forbidden to speak of it. You can ask Rotface, and he'll say it's a gang of ghouls, which is bullshit. When you do the Beyond the Beef quest and you speak to Mortimer, if you have a high enough speech or you have the cannibal perk, you can use that to kind of get in with them. And I believe, I could be wrong when I say this, but I believe the speech option is something along the lines of, I know the taste too. Like, something along those lines of, like, I crave it as well. Like, I know what, you, what you're into, and I understand. They're actually the only family on the Strip, so out of the three casinos, they're the only one that you could have a reputation with. Marjorie actually explains to the courier that they did used to eat people back in the day, but it was different times, different circumstances. They don't do that anymore because of their contract with House. So, Josh Sawyer has said in a forum post... Uh, during the development, the White Glove Society was originally called the Sawneys, S-A-W-N-E-Y-S. I don't, I thought it was cool. It sounds very pish posh, very like, we're the Sawneys. It's cool. They're one, they have their own card. It's probably the, the uh, Eight of Diamonds, probably on screen somewhere behind me. There's a huge fly on my window. He's not welcome in here. But that's all I have to say about the White Glove Society from Fallout New Vegas. And that, my friends, is in fact this week's lore.